Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome to Community Matters on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host today, Carol Mon Lee. Our show is called Manoa Valley Theater, celebrating 50 years as Honolulu's off-Broadway playhouse. And we're going to talk about how community theater enriches our lives. Local community theater is not just entertaining and enriching, but also a thought-provoking educational experience that needs continued support. Our guest today is award-winning producing director Dwight Martin of Manoa Valley Theater. Welcome, Dwight. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. Well, Manoa Valley Theater has been around for 50 years. 50 years, yeah. And you have an exciting uh, season this year. We do. So let's start talking about your season this year and what you're actually showing, what's, what's playing right now. Well, uh, right now we're just at the end of our 49th season. Mm -hmm. We have a, a delightfully uh, entertaining uh, musical comedy on stage over at Kamiki High School Theater, actually. It's a play by Lisa Matsumoto and Rosalind Katrachia. Uh, Lisa Matsumoto was a very prominent playwright in our community. She yes. was a product of the University of Hawaii. And she did these distinctive um, retelling of fairy tales using Pidgin English and all kinds of uh, uh, local references, and they're just hilarious, and it's a privilege for us to be able to produce her work. This is the fourth play by Lisa Matsumoto that we have produced, and because they are ginormous in size, uh, we are in partnership with Kaimuki High School Performing Arts Center, and this particular production is happening on their stage right now. I see. So what do you mean large in size? Do well, there is more than 40 members in the cast. Oh, my goodness. And there's about 10 people on the crew. Okay. And we need to be flying scenery in and out and using devices that we don't have in our 165-seat black box theater up in Manoa. So how many seats in Kaimuki? Over 600. Uh -huh. And so you're in the middle of, the, of this particular... We are. We're just, we've just started the second week of the run. The play is planned to uh, go for three weeks. Uh -huh. And uh, we have plenty of seats left, so we hope that people will come. It's family friendly, and it just is hilarious. I know it got a, I'm going to show the audience, it got a great review in the paper. It did, yes, recently. we were very lucky. Yeah, and uh, so let's see, I think we have a couple of pictures uh, from the production. Can you we talk do, about we this? do. Well, we have pirates in the show. Um, uh, many of your viewers are probably familiar with the, uh, the old fairy tale about the princess and the pea. And right. so this is a local adaptation of that, and it's very, very clever, and it's two different kingdoms and one is trying to marry off their prince, the other is trying to marry off their princess. And just as in the original Princess and the Pea story, the princess must pass a test I see. to prove and that she is a princess. And she is thrown out to sea, she is uh, captured by pirates, there are all kinds of sub-stories that come in and play. Well, tell us about the actors here. Well, they're uh, all from the local community. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a great talent base here in uh, Hawaii. We're very, very fortunate. And uh, a number of these actors have been in this production before, uh, when produced by Ohia Productions and other theaters. So uh, there's some alums from Lisa Matsumoto's days, no and that's great because right. it, it instills it with a, with a particular energy. Uh, she was just an amazing talent, and people were touched by her. And to have people who worked with her be involved in our production of her plays is a real privilege. Yeah, it's a real legacy that her productions still live on and are still true. very meaningful. That's to true. Us, and right? and they are larger shows, so not everyone is going to be producing them. Uh, and uh, uh, we're very beholden to the Matsumoto family and to Rosalind Katrachia for giving us this opportunity. These are wonderful stories. And while Lisa tragically was taken from us 10 years ago, we think that her artistic work should live on. And it's interesting because we get a lot of emails from people when they've seen the show about how much they enjoyed it. And a number of emails we've gotten are from people who saw these shows first as children, uh, and now they are parents and introducing their, ch their children to it. Right. So there's sort of a living legacy there, and we're very happy to be a part of that. Yeah, I think we have one more slide from the show. Yeah. There's our poster for the show, and uh, you can see it tells a little bit about the story. and. Uh, uh, it's just just a lot of fun. It really is. Okay, and we'll tell people that they can get tickets still, right? They can. Tickets they can contact available. Manoa Valley Theater 
uh, through our phone at 988-6131, or uh, the majority of our customers have been purchasing through our website, which is very easy, and that's manoavalleytheater.com. So right. the tickets are available there. Okay, good. Well, that's a great segue into actually the talent that we have here in Hawaii and putting on community theater. So I wanted to start out with that wonderful production because it's got such great reviews. But tell us in general about community theater here and, and the types of um, actors and writers and uh, stage people that you have and how do you get them? Well, it's interesting because um, we ha we're training people at the University of Hawaii and some of the other educational institutions. Is that how you got started? Uh, some not me personally, but, but, um, but many, many of the people involved with our theater and the other local theaters are products of the University of Hawaii system. And of course, Manoa, we're right in the valley. We're right there in the valley. The we're just half a mile away. So uh, we're, we're, we're uh, physical neighbors as well as uh, cultural neighbors. And um, in Hawaii, you know, uh, there are a lot of reasons people choose to live here, um, and all of them are good. Um, but Hawaii doesn't have professional theater by definition of having paid opportunities for people, with one exception, Honolulu Theater for Youth does actually hire actors each year to uh, perform in their series of plays. But all the other theaters are using uh, volunteer talent from the community. But just because it's volunteer doesn't mean that it's not high quality. And we boast an amazing high quality of talent here in Hawaii. Uh, directors, designers, performers. You know, when people come to a play, they see the actors on stage in front of them and they sort of think two-dimensionally that is the production. But of course, the play had to be written. It had to be directed. The lighting and the costumes and the props and the sets all had to be designed and constructed. And the people behind the scenes that are changing the scenery and helping the actors make fast costume changes are all very much a part of the show. So it's really a team that has to come together uh, to, put a, to put a play on the stage. So do you find um, I know there are many other theaters. There are several other theaters. I don't know how many there are in, Lo in Honolulu. Are you all competing for the same um, talent? And yes and no. Uh, we are competing for the same talent, but we also are working together to nurture the talent. Uh, because if an actor goes to another theater and has a good experience and wants to do that again, uh, chances are likely as not that they may come to Manoa Valley Theater the next time. And so we all are sort of committed to nurturing the local community and to give opportunities. And whether it's performing or directing or designing at Manoa Valley Theater or another theater, it's really contributing to the overall theatrical community that we have. And I think that all the local theaters are very good about supporting the overall community. Right. We do have an organization called Hawaii State Theater Council, and all the producing theaters on Oahu, at least, um, are organizational members of that. How many are there? Well, right now, on the statewide basis, we have 19 mm -hmm. organizational all members the in the council. Yeah. So um, that's excellent because it gives us an opportunity to sit together as friendly competitors, right. to talk about uh, uh, subjects of common interest, and to sort of have a, a community vision of how we can work together to make the performing arts program as strong as we can, uh, to entertain the audiences as best we can. Have a variety of programming. And have a variety. So you make sure that you don't overlap. You're both not going to offer the same show in the same season. We certainly try and not do right. that, yes. Uh -huh. And at Manoa Valley Theater particularly, one of our artistic fortes is that we do a very diversified season, artistically yeah, tell speaking. Yeah, us about that. Mm -hmm. So in, uh, we produce six plays a year, typically. And within those six will be a couple of comedies, will be a couple of musicals, maybe a couple of dramas. Um, and we believe that that blend provides a, a great year-round program of performances. Um, I, I often uh, kid people that if, if someone calls me or writes me and says, gee, I really didn't care for that last play, that was a subject I'm not interested <laughs> in or whatever, I say then absolutely you must come to the next one. Because right. Garen's, it's going to be very different. So some theaters will sort of choose a particular niche, and most of their play productions may sort of fall in that niche. But um, one of the reasons we call ourselves Honolulu's Off-Broadway Playhouse is that we provide a variety of play type, like you might see Off-Broadway. Right. And also because our physical environment is quite small. We're 165 seats. It's one room. It's a black box theater. 
um, there are shows that can be done to their advantage in, in, a, in an austere space like that that might not work in a larger theater. And conversely, some of the large musical comedies and musical pieces need a bigger stage, need a fly system to move scenery in and out and so forth. So do you do a lot of original plays from Hawaii? We actually know, do, um, don't of course this one. at our theater. Oh, uh -huh. uh, one of the reasons we call ourselves the Off-Broadway Playhouse is that we look very specifically to Broadway and Off-Broadway for plays to choose for production. And probably more than 50% of the plays we choose, we present in their Hawaii premieres. Oh. So this is the first exposure that local audiences will mm -hmm. have to them. That's not to say that there aren't repeat plays that we do. Um, Who are popular, like that, Tommy. And right, exactly. But um, uh, we really try and uh, fill a, 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 a mission of introducing Hawaii audiences to um, uh, theater arts work that they not have not been exposed to before. But have heard about, read about. Usually have, you know, yeah. and another reason why we look to Broadway and Off-Broadway, because you've probably seen it in a news magazine or heard about it on television or watched the Tony Awards right. and so forth. Well, let's show so. in the next slide because I think this is one of those shows. Sheer Madness. Now, this is a fun, fun show. <laughs> we've, we, we produced this last month, uh -huh. and it's the second time that we've done it. Now, Sheer Madness has the distinction of being the longest running play in American history. Really? The show has been going over 30 years. It originated out of Boston. And what's so clever about it is, it's a murder mystery whodunit. It takes place in a hair salon, <laughs> hence the name Sheer Madness. Okay. And uh, a murder has taken place off stage. The police arrive and they start interrogating the uh, people in the hair salon. And about halfway through the play, the onstage action pauses, the lights in the theater come up, and the investigator turns to the audience and invites them to ask questions to help solve the mystery as to who the murderer was. And so it's all. I've seen that. Yes. It was a long time ago, but now I recall. Yes, yeah. and so it's very, very clever. Uh -huh. It's very clever. And uh, we first produced it uh, 20 years ago. We were one of the first independent theaters in the country to be licensed to do so because the owners of the show hold it very close uh, to hand, and they have their own productions in major cities around the country. It's been playing in the rooftop theater at the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C. for over 20 years. So we approached them about doing it in Hawaii 20 years ago. They said, oh, thanks for your interest, but we're not letting ind independent companies produce it yet. And over a series of four or five years, I uh, pestered them enough with my inquiry letters that they finally said, you know, we can't say no to you anymore. Please, go ahead, produce <laughs> it for Hawaii. And it was a big success then, and it was again last month. Oh, great. I think we have, let's show another slide, because this is so much fun to see these different shows. And what is this? This is from... We have three young whip people. We uh, do. This is from Fun uh, Home, uh -huh. which is a musical drama. We produced it earlier this spring. It's a Tony Award winning play. It's a, it's a masterpiece, really. And these three actresses are all portraying the same character ah, but at different ages. ages and so the story moves back and forth through time it's about a family and it's about a, a woman who has uh, become a graphic designer professionally and she's reflecting back on on the values and so forth in her upbringing that shaped her adulthood and uh, uh, it actually turns out that she is a lesbian she discovers about herself and she learns that her father, uh, although he was married to her mother, also was sort of dallying on the side because he was having his own feelings, same-sex feelings. I and see. so that informs the whole story. Of course. And here we have three actresses who are portraying her at different points in her growth. So how popular was the show? It was very popular. Uh -huh. It did extremely well. Are most of your shows sold out, or how does Most it are. Uh, most of the productions hold over for extra performances to accommodate the demand. Again, with only 165 seats, yeah. and having a season subscriber base, right. the remaining seats that are available for general sale are not that many. So usually our plays do sell out and hold over. Good. Well, we're at uh, break time. Oh, we're already. Going, I know, it's very <laughs> fast. So we'll be right back. This is Carol Mon Lee with Community Matters and my special guest, Dwight Martin from Manoa Valley Theater. Hi, I'm Bill Sharp, host of Asian Review here on ThinkTech Hawaii. 
Join me every Monday afternoon from 5 to 5.30 Hawaii Standard Time for an insightful discussion of contemporary Asian affairs. There's so much to discuss, and the guests that we have are very, very well informed. Just think, we have the upcoming negotiation between uh, President Trump and Kim Jong-un. The possibility of Xi Jinping, the leader of China, remaining in power forever. We'll see you then. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. Welcome back. This is Carol Mon Lee on Community Matters with my special guest, Dwight Martin, with Manoa Valley Theater, which is celebrating its 50th anniversary this year. Actually, next year, right? Uh, beginning next month starts the anniversary mm -hmm. season. Right. Yes. Well, tell us a little bit about Manoa Valley Theater's history. 50 years ago, uh, and how many productions, and how long have you been with it? Well, uh, you know, we've over 50 years, we've produced over 300 play productions. Um, the theater was founded by some graduate students from the University of Hawaii back in 1969, and at that time they were interested in doing some plays that other local theaters weren't doing, mm -hmm. so they thought the best way to handle that was just to start their own theater, <laughs> and uh, uh, whoever would have thought that it would have survived half a century. But um, over the years, through uh, a lot of community support, through support of the uh, local theater artists, the actors and directors and designers and so forth, it not only has survived, but it has thrived. And, uh, and here we are at a uh, half century mark, and it's hard to believe. Right. Um, I joined the, uh, the team in year 12, so I've been there for the last 38 years. Oh my goodness, as producing director, as producing which means director, what? Yeah. Well, it means basically I, I run the organization. I'm responsible for the business side of it, as well as the artistic side. Artistic um, meaning you help select? Select the plays, uh, choose the guest directors. I am an actor, yes. Uh, that's <laughs> avocational on the side. I don't get paid for that. But I love to act. Uh, actually, my university degree is in acting and directing. What have we seen you in lately? Well, most recently I was in uh, a play called Equus by Peter Schaffer, ah, yes. which was a very uh, searing drama. Yes. Uh, and uh, that was a great privilege to, uh, to be mm -hmm. in that show. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, there's so many people who are, are responsible for us being half a century old. Right. You know, um, they have given energy, they've given love, they've given talent, mm -hmm. they've given time, mm -hmm. they've given money. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I really see uh, running the theater as being more of a coordinating responsibility to coordinate people who are interested in having a dynamic theater producing organization. Right. And whether they come to us as actors, whether they come to us as play sponsors, as donors, as well-wishers, whatever it might be. Um, my job is to uh, create an environment where they feel welcome, uh, where they want to give, um, and uh, uh, to uh, put together programs that they will want to be involved with. Right, and provide such an enriching community experience. It really well, is a great experience. And, and you know, um, we choose plays, as I said earlier, uh, that are quite diverse. They're sort of all over the artistic map. We, we believe at Manoa Valley Theater that um, any, any good play uh -huh. deserves consideration. Now, what's a good play? I mean, that's subjective. It sort of depends on who reads it and how they respond to it. But plays that are, are award-winning, plays that may have um, uh, enlightening themes mm -hmm. or even aggressive themes. Sure. We were the first... The educational opportunity for the community. Yes, we were the first... Um, uh, independent community theater in the country to be licensed to produce Tony Kirshner's Angels in America no 20 years ago, which is an amazingly powerful play about the beginning of the AIDS crisis and how the government didn't respond to it. Right. And uh, it's just, it, it's, it's written in two parts. Mm -hmm. uh, each one is a full length. And the two parts together have won the most Tony Awards 
of any play ever. And the Tony Awards, of course, of course. Are, the, are the theatrical awards that are given once a year. Right. So we were privileged to produce that play. But then on the flip side, we'll do something that's innocuous, that's right. entertaining, right. that's family friendly. Right. So uh, we try and do a little bit of everything. We can't right. please everybody all the time. Right. We try and please most of the people most of the time. <laughs> Let's show our next slide, which is actually our background. So there it is, <laughs> Manoa Valley Theater. Yeah. This, this is facility. In the heart um, of Manoa. Uh, we uh, built in the mid-1980s. Uh, the theater first moved to this property in uh, Manoa in 1972. It's actually um, owned by Kwaihau Church. It was the site of their Manoa mission, and there's a graveyard on the property. Mm. And in 1972, the people who were then running Manoa Valley Theater were looking for a venue because they were gypsying around town to different spaces. Someone was driving by this property one day, noticed this big rectangular building, that's all you need for theater, okay. and uh, approached the church, and they very graciously uh, uh, agreed to lease us the property. Uh, Reverend Abraham Akaka was one of our subscribers and donors, and was very passionate about the fact that the mission of the theater was not dissimilar to the mission of the church in terms of community service. Of course, and so do you maintain the cemetery? We do maintain the cemetery. Mm -hmm. It right. goes back 150 My years. My goodness, okay. Yeah. And so now let's talk about the 50th anniversary, the special uh, year coming up and what you're, you're planning We're for so excited. We have six play productions planned. Um, we, yeah, this is our lo your logo. This is the right? logo that we've uh, created for the anniversary season. And uh, when we were first putting the plays together for it, um, uh, I was somewhat conflicted between um, doing plays we'd done before or looking ahead to new plays. And we decided that there have been so many wonderful plays we've done before. And over 50 years, many people who first saw them are no longer in our audience. They're new people to be exposed to The children to them. and yeah, their the grandchildren. Children. And so we've chosen um, uh, four of our greatest hits to be produced again. Uh, Avenue Q, Tony Tina's Wedding. I think Tina's we have wedding. a list of the... Um Playlist. The Rocky Horror Show. Uh -huh. um, Rocky uh, Horror pageants. Show, that's a lot of fun. Now that one has been around for a long time. It's been around a long time. It came out in the 1970s. Right. And we produced it on stage about uh, 10 years ago. Uh -huh. And uh, so those are ways that we can bring back shows that were extremely popular that a lot of people would like to enjoy again. Right. Then we have two very special productions that actually have some connectivity to Hawaii. Hawaii. Um, Shipment Day uh, by Lorenzo Di Stefano is actually a true life story. Uh, Lorenzo is a playwright director who now lives in California, but he was Kailua born and bred. And um, he discovered uh, that he had a cousin who was one of the Kalapapa uh, residents, and he met her about 10 years before her death um, at her age of 90. And she, um, in the 1930s, was diagnosed with Hansen's disease. And as was the case back then, uh, she was incarcerated at Kalapapa. And so her cousin, Lorenzo, was very moved by the story, met her before her demise, and uh, wrote this play called Shipment Day, um, which is about uh, the preparations before she was actually sent off to Kalapapa. Is it, is it a new play then? Uh, it was in a shorter one-act form earlier and was read locally by Play Builders Hawaii. It was part of their play festival and won a Best Play Award. And he then expanded the script for a larger production, which is what we're doing, so it actually is going to be a world premiere. Wonderful. The second production we're very excited about is the musical drama Allegiance, yes. which was on Broadway a year and a half ago. And it tells the story of the Kimura family who was directly affected by the internment of Japanese Americans during World War II, and how that internment and the whole political climate at the time divided this family. And interestingly, it was inspired by the true life story of George Takei, who many of the viewers will know as uh, Star Trek. Star Trek Lieutenant Sulu. And he's very and vocal, vocal he, in today's. He was five years old mm -hmm. when he remembers the American soldiers with rifles in arm coming up the family driveway and giving the family 30 minutes to get together whatever belongings they could carry and be taken off. So he met a playwright uh, who was inspired by the story. And uh, while the story is not autobiographical, it does reflect the experiences uh, that uh, George had in the camp. 
and it's it's amazing and we're quite privileged to be able to produce the Hawaii premiere of that because it's a large play and because we expect it to have such great community interest we're actually going to producing be producing that on stage at the Hawaii theater next Hawaii March. Hawaii theater oh yeah. my goodness okay so uh, allegiance it's just an amazing story it really is uh, that's uh, George Decay actually starred in it too right in the he Broadway. did on Broadway yeah. and then again they just did a uh, a limited run in Los Angeles in February and March, and he reprised uh, his two roles there. He has two roles in the play. And so here, have you already um, cast? We haven't cast it yet. We're getting close to that. We're going to mm -hmm. hold open auditions mm -hmm. in September, mm -hmm. and uh, and the play is will be on stage in March. How do you uh, find these the local talent? How do you? Uh, we announce our publish. auditions publicly. Mm -hmm. um, we have an electronic uh, e-list that people who are interested in getting information can sign up for, it's free, and uh, we notify them. I have about 1,100 people on that list. And then we put it out through the media, and uh, of course the theatrical community already has its own coconut wireless, right. so uh, as soon as uh, information hits the streets, it disseminates pretty quickly. Do you have any relationship with any of the universities or colleges uh, as part of their drama department or their? We have a great working relationship um, it's interesting because um, drama departments are so busy under themselves. Um, so I have people ask me many times, well, aren't you affiliated with the university and don't you have opportunities for their students? And we do, but their students usually are very busy with the opportunities Within which are part campus. of their degree program. Of course. But we have directors from the university, we have designers, we have performers. Um, also from HPU, from Leeward. So we're open to everyone in the community who has the time, the ambition, the talent, right. and the interest in being involved. Good. Are there any other events for the 50th anniversary coming up besides the season of plays? At the moment, we have our hands full getting uh -huh. these plays organized. Yeah. Uh, the board of directors is talking about some other activities that uh, we might do during the year because, uh, again, we want it to reflect on the community. Um, it is the community that has supported us. It's the community that continues to infuse the energy into our organization and sustain it. And, so is your uh, funding all by what, fund, uh, uh, sponsors? Well, or it's hook and, sales? hook and crook. <laughs> um, about 50% of our annual revenue comes through box office, through ticket sales. The other 50% comes from community sources. And we have donations from individuals. We have corporate sponsorships, play sponsorships. We do have some grants from private foundations. We have a little bit of government money, and uh, that makes up the other half of the budget. So we're always out there working the community of course. and letting people see the opportunities to be a part of the team and to help fulfill the mission that we provide. Good. Well, Dwight, we have come to the end of our time, but we have a few more seconds that I'd like you to look into camera for and tell our viewers how they can contact you for more information about the season or the 50th anniversary. To learn more about Manoa Valley Theater, please do visit our website, manoavalleytheater.com. If you're interested in purchasing tickets to The Princess and the Iso Peanut or our season tickets or any of the upcoming plays, you can call us at 988-6131 or you can also purchase through the website. So we're very available. We're happy happy to talk to anyone at any time, and we welcome new friends and new supporters who are interested in theater arts and want to be involved with Manoa Valley Theater. Wow, well thank you so much, Dwight. This thank you, Carol, so it's been fun. a delight, it really has. Yes, well, this brings us to the end of our show. We've enjoyed bringing it to you, and I'm your host, Carol Monley. We've been talking about Manoa Valley Theater celebrating 50 years as Honolulu's off-Broadway playhouse. Local community theater is not just entertaining and enriching, but also a thought-provoking educational experience that needs your support. Thank you so much, Dwight. Thank you, Carol. Aloha, and we'll see you next time.